Was it too gory? Or was the story just completely incoherent? Honestly, you'll probably never guess why the first draft of Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey was scrapped. A. A. Milne and E. H. Shepard's beloved Winnie the Pooh universe entered the public domain in 2022, making its characters instantly usable for adjacent creative projects. Well, everyone except for Tigger, that is. Left behind? Well, that's a horrendous thing to do to a guy. Although Pooh and his pals in Hundred Acre Wood are traditionally kind-hearted and guileless, director Reese Frake Waterfield decided to make a hard pivot and reimagine these creatures as bloodthirsty murderers in Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. This shocking recontextualization allows the film to function as a violent slasher, where the otherwise honey-loving anthropomorphic bear goes on a blood-soaked rampage alongside his feral friend, Piglet. Gone is the nostalgic charm of Hundred Acre Wood as the space has now been transformed into a hunting ground rigged with dangerous death traps. Frank Waterfield's initial efforts to approach the heartwarming source material were mired in complications, as the problems that plagued the writer-director were myriad. Firstly, his approach to these characters had to be wholly original, as Pooh and his friends are characters associated with innocence and warmth and meant to offer solace. Moreover, repainting Pooh and Piglet as bloodthirsty killers who feel the need to enact revenge on Christopher Robin ran the risk of being totally one-note or simply unbelievable, even within the context of a slasher. So, Frank Waterfield had to tread carefully when it came to convincingly structuring his overarching story. That being said, Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey is not for those who wish to cling on to the innocence of their comfort woodland creatures, as the film dives headfirst into territories that are rather twisted and discomforting. Interestingly, however, the original script draft for the film was deemed unfilmable, not because of its content, but due to reasons related to copyright laws. Ultimately, Frank Waterfield had to be extremely careful about the specific iterations of the characters he could draw inspiration from as the ones under the Walt Disney trademark would have immediately led to a bad case of copyright infringement. In an interview with Yahoo Entertainment, he explained this issue in greater detail. It was unfilmable. I had to literally trash that script and start anew. I had to be really careful about what I was drawing inspiration from. Only the 1926 version is in the public domain, so those are the only elements I could incorporate. He went on to explain further, other parts like Pooh Sticks and Tigger and Pooh's Red Shirt, those aren't elements I can use at the moment because they're the copyright of Disney, and that would get me in a lot of trouble. The first script had a lot of those elements in it, and those elements would have really encroached on the Disney branding and IP. Frank Waterfield is referring to Milne's 1926 Winnie the Pooh novel, which was the only source he could incorporate elements from. Everything else, especially material from Disney-made animated films and television shows, was strictly off-limits including the popularized images of Pooh wearing a red t-shirt or Piglet's cutesy all-pink attire. Taking advantage of the material made available in the public domain, Frank Waterfield situates the narrative of Blood and Honey years after Christopher Robin's visits to the Hundred Acre Wood as a child. This allows him to twist a familiar premise into something altogether frightening and drastically alter Pooh and Piglet's personalities in the wake of their abandonment-fueled trauma. Even the decision to allot a slasher-esque tint to the events was motivated by the need to evade Disney lawyers, as Frank Waterfield wanted to distance his rendition of the Poohverse as much as possible from the corporation's traditional iterations. The writer-director explained, I took Pooh down the Michael Myers slasher route, rather than making him a bit like Chucky, which might be a bit closer to Disney. I wanted to embrace the horror of it and try to make something quite scary and menacing. That led me towards a completely opposite end from the Disney version, which is obviously designed to be friendly and cuddly. A combination of these factors gave birth to a script that features R-rated violence, which is miles away from the pleasant, child-friendly Disney-backed projects. Freak Waterfield also insists on lingering on the motivations of the villain in a horror film, which led him to position Pooh front and center, especially during the gruesome chase and kills. Please to be friends, why are you doing this, please? Although follow-up projects to Blood and Honey purely depend on audience interest and demand, Frank Waterfield wishes to introduce more familiar characters in a potential sequel. Brandishing his commitment to ruin everyone's childhood, Frank Waterfield has also expressed his interest in creating a cinematic universe filled with twisted versions of beloved characters, including Bambi and Peter Pan. In Frank Waterfield's blood-tainted cinematic world, innocence is but a fleeting dream where no legacy comfort characters are safe.